Hey guys, this is Maiko. I'm a physical therapist in Southern California. So my attempt to post something on a daily basis about the principles of movement system impairment syndromes has uh, already been halted. Oh my goodness. Uh, so yesterday I was working really hard on preparing for the monthly webinar, uh, which I am really glad to say it ended very well this morning. Uh, but I totally ran out of time for filming and posting yesterday as it took a little bit longer to prepare. So I know this is just one big excuse and I hope to be more consistent uh, so that I can reach uh, out to my friends uh, as well as possibly new friends out there. Uh, I really have so much respect uh, and appreciation for all of those vloggers out there who are posting incredible videos on YouTube every single day. So yeah, you heard me, Alex. All right, so um, I know that it really takes uh, commitment and serious time management skills, and uh, I, I better really get on with that. So today, I'm going to talk about uh, the idea of relative flexibility. A couple days ago, I've already mentioned this big idea about how the body takes the path of least resistance. Okay, so relative flexibility is a really good way to explain why the path of least resistance happens. When we talk about relative flexibility, we're specifically talking about joints. I'll use the neck or the cervical spine as an example because I can do a really bad movement. So let's say I'm going to flex the neck. Uh, ideally, we would want each segment to contribute to the flexion movement, but if my lower cervical spine is more flexible than the upper cervical spine, my neck flexion is going to look like this. Right? Pretty bad. Okay. So I have to bring out my uh, favorite resistive bands again uh, because this is such an effective uh, way to visualize for the patients the relative flexibility and path of least resistance. So in this case, the pink band was my lower cervical spine and the gray thick band is the upper cervical spine because the lower cervical spine is relatively more flexible than the upper cervical spine it ends up uh, bending more from the lower cervical spine early on actually instead of flexing what usually ends up happening is anterior translation of the lower cervical spine which uh, causes further shear stress and increased pain so how do physical therapists uh, treat the problems of this relative flexibility? Well, we'll be talking about the movement system impairment syndromes of the lumbar spine, hip, and knee joints at the Los Angeles Movement System Seminar in August. Uh, if you've already actually taken an MSI course before, I highly recommend the advanced MSI course, uh, the lower quarter, offered at Washington University in St. Louis this coming October. I'll put both of the website links down below. All right, so thanks for watching and uh, please share me on so I could keep uh, posting every day for the next week or so. Take care guys.